Hello and welcome to the Wellness Zone podcast, where we discuss the science of wellness, metabolism, and dietary pathways to maintain them. I'm Mary Perry, and today I'm here with Dr. Barry Sears. Good morning, Mary. And today I thought we might talk about forever drugs. And and this is one of the big problems we're facing in terms of healthcare. Drugs have are really fall into two categories. Drugs which are used as needed, or drugs you have to take forever. Let's use an example of a drug to be used when needed. Let's say you have a headache. What drug do you take? Aspirin. A big boy aspirin. (laughs) And usually the big boy aspirin works and the headache's gone. Do you keep on taking the big boy aspirin? No. No. It's basically, it's it's solved the problem. So say, that's great. But what if you have a problem that the doctor says, you know, you have to take this drug the rest of your life. What would that be? Oh, the doctor says, you have high cholesterol. Mm-hmm. Well, take the statin, and you say, for doctor, how long? For the rest of your life. And most of the drugs we basically use today are forever drugs. Mm-hmm. And so why are they forever? Because they only treat the symptoms. They do not basically go to the underlying cause. So this is the problem we have, saying we become more of a, a drug-directed society mm-hmm. as opposed to saying, what's the cause? And how can I basically uh, address it? So most of our problems that we take forever drugs for are metabolic problems. High cholesterol is a metabolic problem. High blood sugar is a metabolic problem. Depression is a metabolic problem. So perhaps we should be thinking of a forever drug to basically go to the cause, to the underlying cause of chronic disease. And that would be the diet. What happens when you stop eating? You get hungry? <laughs> well, you, uh, if you stop eating long enough, you die. So, say, so that's a forever drug. I've got to eat because if I don't eat, I'm going to die. So I have to eat for the rest of my life if I want to stay alive. Okay, good point. Now, what if your eating is causing the symptoms that you have to treat with a forever drug? Does it make sense to take the forever drug or go back and change the forever diet? Change the diet. I would think so. At least my, call, call me call me silly. <laughs> and so this is what the, the whole goal of metabolic engineering is. Basically, metabolic engineering makes drugs work better. If they work better, you need less of them. If you need less of them, they have less side effects. So it's not re- replacing the drug. It's saying, what's the underlying problem? What's the metabolic cause of that problem? And how can I adjust my diet using uh, metabolic engineering to mitigate that to take the least amount Mm -hmm. of drugs? I'll use an example. Diabetes. How do we measure diabetes? Your blood sugar levels? That's right. It's a number. Uh, How do we measure cholesterol? Your cholesterol levels? It's a number. How do we measure depression? Ooh, you can look at mood scores. That's a little oh, bit that, That's not a number. That's not. That's guessing. <laughs> a little that's bit more guessing. subjective. <laughs> how do we How do we measure of uh, rheumatoid arthritis? Your RA numbers, right? No, you say it hurts. True. Okay. All right. So, so out, outside of diabetes and high cholesterol levels, we actually basically have very little hard science to go on. Is the drug working? Mm-hmm. So it's all subjective. So what we want to do is saying in each of those disease states I just mentioned they are really basically driven by uh, metabolic inefficiencies. And so the more we basically use metabolic engineering to basically redirect the diet, to redirect the metabolism, then the numbers, the drugs or diseases that have numbers, if they go down, I can keep on reducing the amount of the forever drug. Mm -hmm. Now, let's example that you have diabetes. Uh, What's the criteria? It's usually based on blood sugar scores. Oh, really? Hemoglobin A1C. Mm -hmm. So uh, above, below 6.5, you're no longer considered to be a diabetic. So I'll say, okay, if I get my, if I use my metabolic engineering to reduce my hemoglobin A1C to under 6.5, then I don't have to use as much. I may have to use no drug. And now it goes over 6.5 and says, I may need some drug as a helper. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, how do we look at them? Uh, cholesterol levels. I'm going to go with your numbers. <laughs> well, and, and say, if, if you're in, in the appropriate range, then say, I probably don't need a statin. 
So what you're looking at is say, the more I practice, you know, metabolic engineering as a forever drug, I have to eat f forever. What I want to do is develop a dietary program that basically makes my metabolism more effective. The more effective my metabolism is, the less and less I need of other for forever drugs to treat the symptoms. So it's a whole new way of looking at medicine. It's not saying, what drugs do I need? Now, if I was a drug company, I'd say, yeah, that's a great idea. I can sell more drugs. But it's looking to say, how can I change my diet to make my metabolism more effectively, more effective? Now we have to go back to saying, do we have a number? How do I know my metabolism is more effective? The number is insulin resistance. If I can get my levels of insulin resistance as measured by home IR under one, I've done my job. My drug is working. Now, it's a forever drug. Whatever I did to basically bring it down to under one, I had to do that forever. Why? Because it goes beyond one and really beyond two. Then bad things are going to happen in every organ in my body. So uh, say, this is the forever drug you want to take. It has no side effects. Oh, it has some. Yes, you lose excess body fat. Yes, you kill uh, senescent cells to make you age faster. Other than that, there's no side effects involved, other than basically taking the drug at the right dosage at the right time. And that's the, that's the forever drug that I like. Absolutely. Well, and here, the, the one thing is there's probably a lot of people listening right now that are on forever drugs. So in that situation, I would imagine if you go on this metabolic engineering, you could potentially either come off the drug or at least reduce the amount, correct? Correct. And do we have any data to support that? Yes, we do. It comes from Harvard Medical School, in particular, the Joslin Diabetes Center. Uh, they basically took their diabetic patients and put them on just the zone diet. That's just only one component of metabolic engineering for 12 weeks. And after 12 weeks, what happened? For 70% of the patients, they were taken off their drugs completely. Why? They were no longer diabetic by the criteria of hemoglobin A1C. Now, what happens when they be, stop following the diet? They go right back up. Exactly. And so they're saying, say you were not taking your forever drug. So we'll have to give you another drug to take forever because you didn't follow the first drug uh, prescription. So again, it, it says all roads lead back to Rome. Mm -hmm. uh, at least 2,000 years ago, they said that. Today in medicine, we can say all roads lead back to metabolic control. Mm -hmm. Metabolic control that we can follow by a blood marker. The blood doesn't lie. Either you're basically in the zone, that you're basically having no insulin resistance, or you're out of the zone. It's a yes, no question. So if you're taking now or using metabolic engineering to keep your levels of insulin resistance less than one, you keep taking that drug for the rest of your life. Now, what are the benefits? Yeah, you're going to lose excess body fat. Two, you're going to think better. You're going to perform better. You're going to slow down the aging process. Not bad side effects, mm -hmm. but you had to basically take that drug forever to get that. So a new way of thinking of whether it will occur in uh, our lifetime, who knows? But at least the, the science and the molecular biology is clear. Well, Dr. Sears, thanks so much for enlightening us on forever drugs. I think you've made uh, the clear winner, the diet being your forever drug instead of real drugs. But uh, for more information, where can people go to learn about the science of metabolic engineering? For that, then go to basically drsears.com. And there we explain the details. It's very complex metabolism, but I try to basically lay it out in terms that people can understand saying, I can do that. And that's the first step toward maintaining your health, saying, I can do that. For more on this subject and many other topics on the science of wellness, go to drsears.com.